active a war. Ben Wiedemann, CNN, Jerusalem. Well, the outgoing Pentagon chief says the U.S. will keep as many as a thousand more troops in Afghanistan than was planned for the first part of this next year. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel made a final trip to Afghanistan this weekend as he makes way for Ashton Carter, nominated to replace him. By the end of this month, U.S. forces will end their combat role in Afghanistan to focus on other things, including counterterrorism missions. Well, Hagel is defending the Obama administration's attempt to rescue American journalist Luke Summers from the Al Qaeda branch in Yemen. Summers and South African Pierre Corky were killed during the U.S. raid over the weekend. Hagel says Washington must continue its policy not to negotiate ransom with terrorists, but agrees the Pentagon must be careful how it conducts raids. There's an immense amount of focus and time and review that goes into each of these uh, operations. So I don't think it's, it's a matter of going back and having a review of our process. Our process is about as thorough um, as there, there can be. Is it imperfect? Yes. Is there risk? Yes. But uh, we start with the fact that we have an American that's being held hostage and that American's life uh, is in danger. That's where we start. And then we proceed from there. Well, lawmakers from both U.S. political parties are also defending the failed rescue attempt in Yemen. A woman in Hong Kong is fighting for her life, accused of torturing her maid. We'll take you live to the courthouse and show you how this maid became an international symbol of oppression. Also ahead here, a grim announcement in the case of those 43 missing college students in Mexico. Every country has an identity, a history, customs, culture. A unique landscape that determines how its people live, work, and play. Now, get an insider's look with CNN's On the Road. From recovering an ancient heritage to the next generation of IT education. Join us as we explore Armenia. CNN On the Road. Armenia. Saturday on CNN. In association with Corporacion America. Welcome to the program. Prime Minister Renzi, Secretary General Rasa Mashal, President Barzani, and Son Chan. Prime Minister, welcome back to the program. Thank you. Are you going to offer anything big, big, dramatic, radical to the Sunnis? This is an insurgent war. Surely it needs special forces on the ground to be able to identify future targets. There won't be American special forces on the ground. Turkey, under certain circumstances, is prepared to put boots on the ground in Syria. If others do their own part. Qatar has over the years been criticized of throwing money at a lot of these groups. There's differences between some countries of who are the terrorists and who are the Islamist schools, but we don't consider them as terrorists. Are you joining in the alliance also combating ISIS? You still have huge dreams. They didn't take that away from you. They only can shoot a body, but they cannot shoot my dreams. Amanpour, tonight on CNN. My voice, my story, my life in South Africa, in Kenya, South Sudan. Hear Africa's voices, a way of understanding the world. A dog, you say, in Africa, in Africa, in Africa. CNN African Voices. I am Walhaj Dr. Mustafa Utibuati, entrepreneur from Ghana. Hear my story. African Voices, today on CNN, in association with GLOW. You have the power to do anything. To make a difference, inspire, and change the world. See the stars come out to honor the top 10 CNN heroes of 2014. I'm here to honor real heroes. It's going to be a great evening. It's incredibly humbling to be recognized as a CNN hero. You're killing me, CNN. Got me sobbing all up in my Chardonnay. CNN Heroes, an all-star tribute. Tuesday on CNN, in association with Kanika Minolta. An Indonesian woman says her employer brutally beat and tortured her while she was working as a maid in Hong Kong. Photos of Ariana's injuries 
As you can see, these injuries created an international uproar over how women like her can be mistreated. Ariana's former employer is on trial right now. She could spend the rest of her life in prison. Anna Korn has been following this case. She joins us now live from Hong Kong. And Anna, we know that this case has become a symbol of uh, abuse that can be seen with so many of these women from Indonesia coming to Hong Kong uh, to work in a domestic situation. Right, Natalie, women from Indonesia and the Philippines, and it really uh, has brought all the domestic helpers of Hong Kong together, rallying behind Erwiana, uh, showing their support and, and basically saying that this type of abuse cannot happen. Uh, as we have heard this morning, distressing testimony from Erwiana, a 23-year-old Indonesian maid who came to Hong Kong uh, last year. She claims that she was abused by her uh, employer, Lo Wan Tung, a 44-year-old mother of two who is facing 21 counts, uh, including assault. Now, she has admitted to one, uh, that one count uh, being that she, had, she did not pay. Oiana's uh, insurance. However, for the other 20 counts, uh, she claims that she is not guilty. Well, let's sort of explain to you uh, what Oiana is alleging. She claims that she was tortured for some six months and uh, the sorts of abuse uh, that she endured was uh, being beaten, uh, she was punched, uh, slapped, kicked. Uh, the sort of implements that were used, a vacuum cleaner, a mop, a ruler, uh, a coat hanger, even a ladder. A ladder was pushed into her, she was pushed off a ladder. And, and the, the abuse so horrific, Natalie, uh, that one case she was knocked unconscious. And when she came to, she claims her employer uh, forced her to go back to work. Now, Oiana says the reasons that she was attacked were because she at times stole food because she was so hungry. Her employer, Law, uh, fed her three pieces of bread and one bowl of rice each day. Uh, as for her conditions, she made her work for 20 hours a day and she could only sleep in the afternoon from 1 o'clock till 5 p.m. It really is uh, quite extraordinary uh, to learn the, the conditions that Oiana uh, endured for so long. But that is what uh, this woman is facing Lo Wan Tung, this 44-year-old mother of two, as I say, she has pleaded not guilty to the major uh, counts, the majority of counts, 20 of the 21 counts, uh, saying that she is, is not guilty. Um, however, those counts not just relate to Oiana and Natalie, they also relate to another two uh, domestic helpers who Law previously employed. Right, and, and the reason people are taken to the streets is because these aren't isolated incidents, uh, uh, unfortunately. There are reports of these, these women who come to work there uh, being treated very poorly. Is uh, the government of Hong Kong there listening? And, and what recourse or, or what safe havens do these women have when they go through something like this? This woman endured this for so many months. Uh, where can they go when things like this happen? Look, there are agencies in place that are supposed to protect these uh, these women, these domestic helpers from the uh, Philippines as well as, as from Indonesia. We're hearing from Oiana that uh, she had worked for Lo Wan Tung for some five weeks uh, and had not been paid. Uh, she ran downstairs, appealed to her security guard uh, to use his phone. She then dialed the agency. The agency came to her, her workplace uh, they assured her that they would look after her, sort these things out, told her to return. Well, it was after that, Natalie, that the abuse started. Six months of horrific abuse. So clearly, uh, the agency has, uh, has also failed uh, Oiana. But definitely, the rights of Hong Kong uh, domestic helpers, uh, you know, this, this is something that has been overlooked for, for, for a very long time, even though these maids have been working in Hong Kong for a very long time. These, these women, they cannot get citizenship here. Uh, you know, they are paid a, a minuscule wage, and yet they, they raise families, they, they cook, they clean, uh, they, they look after children. Uh, in, in some respects, they, they really do uh, 